Uh, it's time for a segment that uh, we sometimes call Reddit on Reddit. I, I, I thought maybe you'd say it, but you didn't. Uh, we have a few topics from the board game subreddit that we're going to take a look at and delve into and give our personal takes on. Uh, starting with, here is one submitted by a user named Friends Habits Family, which I believe is a reference to a Modest Mouse lyric, which is cool. The question for you, for all of us, type, t thread title, what have been your walking out of the theater moments in board gaming? Almost everyone has a story about the movie that was so bad they had to walk out because they couldn't take it anymore. What games have inspired you or your group to say, this isn't working and made you abandon the table mid-game? Has this ever happened to us or you in individually? Because I'm not sure if I can think of a time when that happened. I feel like even when a game is real bad, we almost always finish it. At least one game. Well, here's the thing. We're the same with movies. We're willing to sit through <laughs> That's <true>. horrible movies. <laughs> so I'm going to say for us, we're counting, I think probably because we feel the need to finish stuff. <laughs> like even, like I think this is also related to how like let's say um, a video game comes out like the fourth in the series. I know you especially, I'm also as much, but you'll be like, okay, first I need to play through one through three again. <laughs> right, I'm a completionist in that regard. So, like, I think that's just us. We feel the need to get the entire experience. We have to get the end point. Mm -hmm. That being said, I will still count these games have hit, at least in my opinion for us, have hit. <laughs> yeah. First one that comes to mind, Bears vs. Babies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was very close to just leaving. <laughs> uh, but we did finish Bears vs. Babies. Next one, which is hilarious because we've continued to play it. Mm -hmm. Nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty bad. That's, that's one you're actually encouraged to stop it at the midpoint if, if you're a good enough player. <laughs> that's, that's the goal of the game is to stop playing. <laughs> we were only lucky enough this year to be able to, un to grab four. Yeah. But I'm sure we won't be so lucky next year. Yeah. Uh, uh, what, what are some games that you can Well, I, I was going to say this almost counts is Eclipse, which we did stop playing technically halfway through, not really because it was bad, but just because the, there was like three hours left and it was, we knew who was going to win already. <laughs> that's, the, that's one of the only times I can really think of actually not finishing a game. Um, uh, yeah, I think yeah. there's one, I can't remember what game. I, we stopped playing Monopoly. <laughs> <laughs> Monopoly is the one game we've, I think that we actually walked away from. But assuming that we didn't, I think there are two that we stopped and started over because we learned we were playing it wrong, but I don't count that. Yeah. And Eclipse, it feels really weird because the ones I said before and that, I feel like we're because we're like, no one was having fun. Yeah, 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 yeah. When that, I just felt like it was just because who we are. and It's not the game I want to blame as much. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, no, I'm, I'm saying it's definitely, it definitely, we didn't stop playing like this is just unplayable, even though I was miserable. <laughs> uh, it was just a situation where we actually did stop playing halfway through. All right, so those, those are, that's some, I thought that was interesting. Next up. Uh, I am curious, because I don't think I've ever seen anyone actually walk out of a theater. So I wonder hmm. how often that happens. Yeah, tell us both. Who cares? Who cares what we talk about on this show? Um, Fast Track XF had a Reddit thread called Narrating Your Moves. Said, I'm very much in favor of narrating my actions whenever I take my turn. I actively try to get my son to do it, and I've gotten to the point where it feels odd when I take a turn in silence. Uh, it helps you keep track of what you're, you're doing, and it shows other players you aren't making a mistake. What's everyone's take on this? Do you do this? Does it bother people when you do this? Something I'd never really thought about before, but I, I think everybody in our group kind of just instinctively does do this usually when we play it games. It depends. There's yeah. three things that can happen. There's A, you narrate in a more jokey sense. And that's usually because everyone's relaxed, you're not worried too much what's going to happen, and maybe the game sort of facilitates that somehow. Mm -hmm. B, there's the silent thing. That's usually when you can autopilot it. This will usually happen, for example, in the DC deck mode game, like da-da-da, all right, eight power. Da -da. It's just like you, maybe you say one thing, but it's not. It's usually silent. Right. And the final one, though, will usually happen more in a worker placement game. And this is because it'll be like, for example, at least for me, mm -hmm. I don't know everyone else, but it'll be like, all right, I'm putting him here. I spend this to move this here. Like, it's almost I'm saying it so everyone sees what I'm doing and can be like, no, that's illegal. <laughs> right. Like, right. It's, it's more of I'm afraid and I need everyone to, to proofread my turn. Yeah, well, and sometimes it's also in more complicated games, you don't want to narrate as much if you don't want to give away your strategy, maybe. Right. There's some maybe a, a line well, crossing. That's, a, that's the other quiet uh, yeah. one I forgot to mention. But usually that's because, like, you're very confident. You're just like, and or you're just terrified. You're like, if right. someone finds out what I'm doing. <laughs> well, I mean, like, you're confident in terms of you know what, what you're doing. Usually a lot of the, the verbal comes from 
please double check me. I'm not <laughs> cheating. I don't mean to. I swear. Well, it's also, I think, something maybe we have picked up more from recording our games because if you're doing it for an audience, you gotta you have to let people know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I also will get annoyed if uh, a tur I realize, oh, it's my turn, and the person before me like didn't say what they were doing. I'm like, hold on. What did you just do? Because I wasn't paying attention. No, and that's what happens with the other silent turn. Be like, what'd you do? I'm like, I had five power. I just bought that. Right. Don't worry about it. It doesn't matter. So interesting, uh, interesting subject. I wonder if there's people who'd always just play their games in silence. I don't know. Uh, and then here's one that uh, you found that was interesting. It's, it's, technically, it's kind of two threads. There was one called, it's easier to make gamers into friends than friends into gamers. Uh, submitted by Infinite Square Whale. And then a user named Calvinized made the response topic to it. It's all about how they found that like their friends, they couldn't get into board games, so they had more luck going out into the world and going to game shops and, and meetups and meeting people. people who already played board games. Into. There were really long posts. You can go read them all yourself if you want. They're very interesting. But yeah. what, uh, I mean, yeah, what, what spoke to you about these? I mean, it made total sense in, because I was thinking about how, like, I mean, not even just with your friends, like with family, sometimes you'd be like, I'm, I can, I'm never going to play a game with them. I, when I try to teach them something that's more basic than tic-tac-toe, their eyes just glaze over. Have you, if the, I feel like in our case, I think we've been mostly successful oh, I'd say friends. We, I'd say we, we have an unusually high success rate. We are also like a nerdier... Like, are there people who don't have as nerdy friends groups maybe? Or? No, well, I th well, it could be that. But I think it's also along the f lines of our group is small, first of all. And even though we've committed some, I feel I feel like there are some people in our group who are like, they really are like, they'd rather, if they if given the option mm -hmm. of we play uh, Kemet, for example, like complicated sort of board placement, or Mario Kart, they're going to choose Mario Kart. Hmm. Yeah, that's that's fair. Yeah, there's def we definitely there's definitely the groups of the heavier and the lighter. Like, groups. we have a joke of when we choose, a, and I think we see that in the video game side, too, like, I know uh, some of our friends will stop at, have stopped recently playing certain video games with us, the com more competitive video games. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I think that sort of is the same thing here. Yeah, it's yeah. definitely something to realize, and it depends on your personality too, because I know, I mean, God bless us for being this lucky. Because I don't know about you, but I like having maybe just four friends, <laughs> and like go going out into the world is definitely a challenge for me. <laughs> on those social it's meetings. tough out there. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Like, I think we've talked about this before. If we like, moved somewhere new, if we could, uh, you know, it's hard to uh, like, just make brand new friends to play board games with, especially because board games are a great icebreaker, but they're also so inherently social right off the bat that it can be hard to want to like, do that with a stranger. It depends on the game. And your yeah, it's partly me for me because I'm always, like, going back to the taking, you know, talking at your turn, silent turn, like, everyone has this small... Like, not just for board games, this is any kind of social event. There's sort of the social rules, which are, some may argue, even more heinous to break than, like, re actual rules of, like, mm -hmm. and you don't, you really got to feel out people, what they're okay with, what they're not, like, what kinds of games they like. Are you, are people okay with you being like, oh, hold on, I screwed up, can I just rearrange this really quickly? Yeah. Kind of deal, and, you know. Yeah. Yeah, interesting. Interesting food for thought. Uh, finally, there's one more post real quick that I wanted to highlight from Reddit. Uh, from user World Shapers, uh, it's called Board Game Podcast Suggestions? Question mark. And it's got about 76 comments, people suggesting board game podcasts, and nobody suggested ours. So I <laughs> uh, just wanted to say shame on all of you. Uh, go on Reddit and uh, please chill for us. <laughs> or just be like, you know, it's cool that you like the cool underground podcast that nobody's ever heard of. If you enjoyed this video, it was just a snippet of our full-length podcast, which you can find on our YouTube channel every week. So please go ahead, like, and subscribe for more board game-related content coming at you in the future. And don't forget to check out RollForCrate.com, where we actually sell a lot of the games we talked about, as well as post news and all our other videos. Until then, I'm Will Keeler. I'm Jonathan Estes, and this is Roll for Crit.